Today, let's see how this sword slash can be done in Unreal. I'm gonna show you the whole process from Niagara to modeling the slash in Blender and how to create the material for it. And by the way, this is one of many that we made for an entire pack of sword slashes that are available on the marketplace and on my Patreon page, links below. So, without further ado, let's jump right into this. So let's begin by creating a new Niagara system, an empty one, rename it to NES underscore sword slash, and in here with right click we can add an empty meter for the slash mesh, the bright one. There's gonna be other layers. Let's begin by adding a spawn burst instantaneous in the emitter update, so it emits something, right? And down here we don't want a sprite, we want a mesh renderer, where I'm going to assign this mesh. Which, by the way, if you have Blender, this is how you can do it. Select everything with A and press delete. We want a clean scene and then with Shift A, we can add a cylinder. On this left bottom panel, we can control the vertices in case you want less. I'm gonna leave it at 32. And there's another cool thing here, which is the cap fill type. We want to set it to nothing. We don't want the top and the bottom face of the cylinder. And now with spacebar, I'm gonna search for shade smooth, you can go to object and do it here as well. Now let's enter in edit mode with tab because we want to add three edge loops with Control R. You can scroll up to add more edge loops. Press enter and then escape. Press A to unselect. And then while holding Shift A, we want to select the middle edge loop. Then we want to turn on proportional editing by pressing O or clicking up here. And with S, we want to scale this up. If you scroll up or down, you can control the influence of the proportional editing. I'm gonna leave it more or less around here. Okay, looks good. And now we can select everything with A, press S and lock it in the Z axis. And you can flatten this until we have this shape. Cool, that's exactly what we need. Let's rename it to slash mesh, for example, and then go to file and in export, select FBX. Turn on selected objects, navigate to your project and export this as an FPX. Once you have the mesh assigned to the mesh renderer, this is something that's going to happen really fast. So for the lifetime, 0.35 is a good value. And in my case, I'm going to give this an offset in the position. Maybe you don't need this in your site. I just want to push it a little bit forward. Now to control the size or the scale of this, I'm gonna use down here the mesh scale in uniform. If you want to stretch it, you can use non-uniform, this value, and this is how it's looking. From here, we can actually rotate this. I'm gonna use initial mesh orientation. Say the mode is none, because I want to specify down here that it is 0 0.25 on the X, so it faces up like this. As you can see, it's vertical now. Now the most interesting part is the rotation and we can control it with a mesh rotation force on the particle update. We get a warning and if we click fix issue, Unreal will add the solve forces and velocity module so it can calculate all of this automatically. From there, let's break this vector, in other words, make vector, and essentially on the Y axis, we want this to be a curve where it starts at one and then we can push the last key to around 0 0.75 and say the values minus 0 0.25. It will create a very interesting rotation Let's select all of these, turn on auto so we can control the handles, so it slows down towards the end. And now on the scale curve, this is where we will control the force of the rotation, let's say 250. And this is what we get, something really fast and then it slows down at the end. It's the basic slash motion and it will look awesome. Now to improve this visually, let's create a material, right click material, double click to open it up. And on the blend mode, let's say it's in additive, so it's really bright. And then create a parameter 2D for a texture, in this case, for a noise texture, which is going to be a Voronoi. I'm going to call it Voronoi, but it could be noise texture. And I'm going to assign this one right here, which is available for free on the link below. Let's duplicate this texture for a mask. We want to mask this. And I'm going to use this light beam that comes with Unreal. If you turn on Show Engine Content on the cog, and the way this will work is, well, first we actually need the particle color. 
If we want to adjust the color directly in Niagara, this particle color will do exactly that and multiply it with the mask itself and connect to the emission. From there, we need a dynamic parameter so we can control parameters inside this shader via Niagara. The first one is going to be called power and the second one erosion. For the power, let's first drag a line from the RGB of the Voronoi and search for the power node because this is going to be controlled via dynamic parameters and the power node essentially dissolves the Voronoi. And then let's drag a line from the RGB mask and multiply it with a power node. Here's how it looks with the mask. We can actually copy and paste this power node from back here to the front because this is going to be for our erosion. Why is it called erosion dynamic parameter? Because we are going to connect this to the multiply, this power node, and it's going to be connected to the opacity and it will look like an erosion effect. And before testing this out on the slash, let's already make sure that we can scroll this, basically pan. Let's copy and paste this dynamic parameter, make sure the parameter index is in one, so it's in a different track basically. And now for the names, let's go with tiling x, tiling y, speed x and speed y. The way this works is first, we append, we create a vector essentially, with a tiling x and a tiling y, and then we'll multiply it with this texture coordinate, with the UVs essentially. And for the speed, we need to create two multiply nodes, so we can multiply the speed with the x and with the speed y. And then we can append them, create a new vector with these two floats. Essentially we have now a tiling to control the scale of the texture and the speed to control how fast it pans in the x and in the y. Now we want to add up here the append and then to the UVs of the Voronoi. And this is what we get if we test some random values on the speed. Let's create a material instance out of this material. Go back to Niagara. And then in the mesh renderer, let's turn on enable material override and assign the one we just created. And this is how it's looking by default, since I left some default values for the speed. Pretty cool, right? We have the Voronoi moving and it's masked, so we don't see any hard edge. Now let's take care of the color. Let's use direct set. And for example, this is the values that I'm using here. Feel free to try different ones, but it's basically 1 for the R, 38 for the G, and 200 for the B. So it becomes really bright, light blue, looking good. And since we have dynamic material nodes, we can use the dynamic material parameters in the particle update. We have index 0 and index 1. On the index 1, you can control the tiling and the speed. I'm going to insert these values because I think they look alright, but you can test different ones. I'm basically stretching the texture. And yeah, for the speed, minus 0 0.2 for the X and 0 0.3 for the Y. But most importantly, the power up here, we want this to be a little bit dissolved, the Voronoi. And for the erosion, convert this to a curve so we can animate it. We want to essentially say that the first key goes to 0 0.3 in position with a value of 0 0.05. And for the last key, we want this to be totally dissolved, so let's say it's 1. Now I'm gonna select all of these and turn on Auto Mode so we can control these Bezier curves to create a curve similar to this one. And then we can use the scale curve down here and say it's 10. It's basically multiplying that curve by a value of 10. From there, let's turn on local space so we can move this object around and it will follow. And this is how it's looking, guys. Look at this. We have a very interesting slash where it dissolves at the end thanks to the erosion. And this is already the core of the slash. From here, we are going to add a few more layers. For example, let's copy and paste this slash mesh and call it the slash mesh bright02. We want to create another layer to add a different color, for example, where we can say it leaves a tiny less longer, like 0 0.37, and it's orange, for example. And in this case, the tiling can be different as well. We can zoom in in the texture, essentially, and change even the speed. If we do this and say the power is 4, for example, we get essentially kind of a background for our slash, an orange background, as you can see. It really makes very well. And you are starting to get an idea of what you can do with this, right? And now we can even add another layer for a dark slash, for example, where it lives a little while longer, almost 0 0.4, and it is completely black. It will create some very interesting contrast. Oh, and it is also a tiny bit smaller. If we isolate this, nothing shows up, and it's essentially because the material is set to additive. We can duplicate it, 
open it up and down here on the material properties override for the blend mode we can switch this to translucent so we can get dark colors and then all we gotta do is go back to Niagara and assign this to the slash dark down here in the mesh renderer here we go we are beginning to see something we could in this case say the power is much less so it doesn't dissolve the Voronoi and then adjust a little bit the erosion the curve itself and say it's 30 so essentially we get much more dark and then it erodes even more creating this cool effect where we still see some dark at the end in our slash oh and let's push this dark slash to the back on the mesh render on the ranging in sort order int let's say it's minus one here we go now it's bright and then we see the black on the back pretty cool right and now if we want we can add an impact to this with the new empty emitter where we add a spawn burst instantaneous with a short lifetime a bright color as you can see it's at the pivot of this object you kind of need to adjust this manually or you could create this effect separately by the way but once it's in position we could as well create a new material for this a very simple one as you can see but the most important part is actually the texture this flare right here which is available for free on the link below and then we could use a scale sprite size to create this kind of curve where it grows in the beginning and then it shrinks and it will look something like this like i said you should create this in a different niagara system so you can pinpoint the impact location because if you don't eat anything this will still play right but i'm just giving you a few ideas here for example it could also fade at the end with a scale color exactly like this where the alpha is a curve here we go it looks really nice when you play all of this together and another cool thing that you could do is add some stretched particles to this with the new empty emitter with the spawn burst instantaneous of around 20 particles and all you had to do is in the particle spawn create an add velocity module fix the issue so it adds the soul forces in velocity and then you could use in a cone mode with velocity between random velocity between 300 and 1000 and then increase the cone angle you would get something like this as you can see you need to push this to the same position of the impact which is not ideal again we are just giving you a few ideas these ones should have a very short lifetime between 0.1 and 0.5 and then you could yeah use a bright color like this one and this is the part where you need to adjust the position and very importantly for this to be stretched on the sprite size mode it should be non-uniform 5 for the x and 80 for the y and then on the sprite render say the alignment is velocity aligned and this will get you this pretty cool effect from there you could also say that they shrink towards the end with a scale sprite size as you can see and then use drag so they kind of slow down and turn on local space as well and yeah you get this pretty cool effect right like i said this should be in a different niagara system by the way but for testing purpose we left it here another cool emitter we can add here is for the hanging particles they will stay flying around for a little while on this empty emitter we can add a spawn burst instantaneous of around 30 and then on the particle spawn use a shape location in torus mode so it kind of has the same shape of the slash where we can say the large radius is 160 and down here the rotation mode it should be aligned with the slash so i'm gonna say axis angle the x is zero and the y is one and then yeah it should have a short lifetime not as short as the stretched particles almost a second for the maximum and then a pretty cool color like a blue a bright blue and in this case i'm gonna align this with the position offset to the slash and say the sprite size is random between one and five for example and yeah they are spawning in the right position which is ideal they aren't moving as you can see to add movement you could use a wind force for example it will look awesome just click fix issue so it automatically adds self forces and velocity and you can click again so it adds aerodynamic drag for the wind speed let's say the x is one and y is zero because we want to say the turbulence the scale is 100 and the frequency it's six this will make it shake a lot and offset by time minus 50 on the z so you can get these very cool floating particles right you get the idea let's fix issue on the aerodynamic drag 
Oh, and disable on the aligned sprite to mesh orientation. Disable mesh orientation relative. Last one. Here we go. Very cool effect. You could drag and drop while holding out the scale sprite size from the stretched particles, so basically they shrink towards the end and also add scale color where the alpha is something like this, so it fades out at the end. It fades in and fades out. And if you don't want this to play indefinitely, go to the system, this blue node, and say the state is 1. And here we go, we have pretty cool slash. So that's it folks, I made this entire project available on my patrons page. You can get it there and use it in your projects. And it comes with all of these sword slashes and more. And I want to say thank you to each patron that supported me last month. And a shout out to top tier patrons, which are Alberto Sageras, Alan Alston, Andre Ripa, David Molina, Diego Marques, Lua Ama, Eric, Phoenix, Frosty40, Grub Lab, Ivan Jacobi, Casey Miller, Leandro Di Ricio, Leon Olt, Matt Morn, Matthew Parker, Mihaita Nastase, Mike Bell, Oitsk, Owen, Azum Safuele, Pay Easy, Pierre Mario Roux, Pradip Sen, Radioactive Bullfrog, Revenant Games, RVR, Shan Aguila, Barry Suta, Whatever Marta, Will Poilian, Vlad, Minja Kim, and Sang Yang Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one.